Ladies and gentlemen, we have a brand new presidential race now. A brand new presidential race. It is Bernie Sanders versus Joe Biden. Reset the scorecard. We're going to be tied coming out of Super Tuesday in delegates. Um, we have about 60% of the states left to vote. So um, here we go. Here we go. Now, Joe Biden had a good Super Tuesday. He has Joe Mentum, as they're calling it. Okay, but... I want America to know what it's getting into if it picks Joe Biden over Bernie Sanders to go up against Donald Trump. Now, Donald Trump, as of this moment, is a giant favorite for re-election. So it's going to be a race no matter who's up against Trump. Doesn't matter, it's going to be a race. But Bernie Sanders is the only one with a prayer. If the, a race was held between Joe Biden and Donald Trump, I think there's about an 80%, maybe a little bit over an 80% chance that Trump wins. Now, why do I say that? For a number of reasons. I mean, first and foremost, Trump had a lot to hold over Hillary's head because of her poor record with the Iraq war and the outsourcing deals and, and Libya and the Clinton Foundation and the speeches to Goldman Sachs. Trump had a lot to go after Hillary with, but keep it real, for all of Hillary's flaws... She's relatively quick on her feet. There's no denying that. Of all my criticisms, and I have many of Hillary Clinton, she's quick-witted. Like, she'll stand there and go back and forth with you. There's no denying that. Joe Biden, Trump has a horrible record to hold over his head, and also, he's not forming coherent sentences. So, we have a lot of this to look forward to if it's Biden versus Trump. Friend, time friend, and she's a friend. She's been my friend in and out of public life. We hold these truths to be self-evident. All men and women created by go. You know the you know the thing. Tomorrow's Superstar Tuesday. All right, Chuck. Thank you very much. Uh, all right, uh, it's Chris. I'm but Chris. anyway, my name's Joe Biden. I'm a Democratic candidate for the United States Senate. Look me over if you like. We see help out. If not, vote for the other by. I love this place. I love, look. What's not to like about Vermont? One of the things I'm proudest of. Is getting passed, getting moved, get, getting control of the Paris Climate Accord. I'm the guy that came back after meeting with Deng Xiaoping and making the case that I believe China would join if we put pressure on them. You had people like Margaret Thatcher, oh, excuse me, you had p p people like the, the former chairman and leader of the party in, the, in Germany. Go to Joe 303. Three O. Oh. Watch what happened when those kids from Parkland came up to see me when I was vice president. They went under the and some, some of you covered it. It's not that they don't want to help. They don't want. They don't know quite what to do. Play the radio. Make sure the television. The, excuse me. Make sure you have the record player on at night. The, the, the phone. Make sure the kids hear words. And to get hot, I got a lot of. I got hairy legs that turn. That 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 turn uh, um, blonde in the sun. And the kids used to come up and reach in the pool and rub my leg down so it was straight and then watch the hair come back up again. They'd look at it. So I learned about roaches. I learned about kids jumping on my lap. And I've loved kids jumping on my lap. Honestly, that's really not even very funny. It's not. It's not. It's very sad. I've seen, and you're going to see him in a little bit as well, I've seen videos of Joe Biden going back to, going back to, that was a ghost, by the way. I'm just kidding. It was my foot that kicked the wire. Going back to 2016, Joe Biden is way sharper than what you just saw right there. Do yourself a favor. Go back all the way to 2012. Watch the YouTube debate between Paul Ryan and Joe Biden and tell me he hasn't lost not just a step. Homeboy's lost like three or four steps. It honestly is sad to watch. He obliterated uh, Sarah Palin in 2008. He obliterated Paul Ryan in 2012. He's also, by the way, a really good debater in those elections. Now compare that to everything that's gone on recently. Guys, I, I really take no pleasure in saying this. He has cognitive decline. He has dementia. And if the response is, yeah, but Trump has it too... Is that really the kind of presidential race we want to have? A race between two people with dementia? And by the way, I think even if you try to make the case that Trump has it, it's nowhere near as advanced as what Joe Biden is dealing with. And again, I take no pleasure in saying this. 
He's not my preferred candidate, but honestly, that's irrelevant. I think the dude needs help. I do. This is very, very difficult to watch. So just so everybody understands, what happens next is there's a lot of people in corporate media who turn around and say, how dare you? You're not allowed to talk about this, specifically because Joe Biden has a, a stutter or he used to have a stutter. And um, when you bring up anything about his speech patterns, you are therefore bullying him for his stutter. I'm not kidding you. There's This is an argument that people make with a straight face, to which my response is, what you just saw is not the result of a stutter. Joe Biden himself said in an, inter in an interview to Axios, no, 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 this has nothing to do with my stutter at all. Nothing. This is, you know, me sometimes I'm struggling to find the words. And according to his campaign staffers, it always happens later in the day. Like he'll be okay earlier in the day. And then as the day goes on, as you get closer to late afternoon and, and evening time, that's when it starts going. And you could see it in the debates. Some of the debates, he starts out relatively strong. And then, you know, I don't know what they do before him. Maybe give him some caffeine or whatever. And then halfway through the debate, three quarters through the debate, all the all of a sudden, he's, you can't understand him. He's incoherent. And it's happened time and time and time again. So I'm telling you, don't take my word for it. Go watch a video of him from four years ago. Go watch the debate with Paul Ryan. It, you know, that's not four years ago. 2016 is four years ago. But check four years ago. Check eight years ago. You know, check 12 years ago. You're going to be amazed at how much more quick and with it he is back then and how sharp the decline has been. Um... So here's my question to you. You really want to put this up against Trump? Now, I get it. There's a lot of people who are part of the Democratic establishment, not the voters, the establishment, who quite literally would rather have a second term of Trump than a first term of Bernie Sanders. That exists. So I'm not talking to them because they're lost causes. They represent their lobbyists, their special interests, the donors and the billionaires. They're representing the corporate interests. So I'm not talking to them. They're a lost cause. What I'm talking to is the voter out there who even might consider themselves a moderate, a centrist. The voters out there who are like, you know, I'm not the biggest fan of Bernie Sanders. Okay. But is this really what you want up against Trump? To the extent that you actually believe the most important thing is to get rid of Donald Trump, as we've heard so many people say. To the extent that you actually believe that. You cannot have Joe Biden go up against Donald Trump. Trump is a giant favorite in that race for a variety of reasons. Just so everybody understands, Trump is already going at it with Joe. And he's already showed his line of attack. He has now repeatedly said, Joe Biden should be in a home somewhere. He said it at multiple rallies and speeches that he's given. Joe Biden, he should be in a home somewhere. He should be in a home somewhere. He's not all there right now. Somebody said on Twitter, Trump is going to go in the debates with Joe Biden, railroad him, call him senile Joe, and then he's going to win in a landslide. I got I to gotta tell you guys, man, with his mind in this kind of state, there's literally a debate to be had. Would you rather have... Somebody who philosophically disagrees with you massively, but is all there mentally, or somebody who agrees with you more philosophically, but is having severe cognitive decline. Who would you rather pick? There's a serious question there. That's not an easy question. Because, you know, you could argue the cognitive decline represents a more clear and present danger than any kind of disagreement philosophically, even if that disagreement philosophically will have bad consequences. Will it be worse than somebody who is in the state that Joe Biden's in? debate that amongst yourselves but this is really 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 bad joe biden needs help joe biden is unelectable so this is my plea to people even who might say i don't like bernie sanders okay but he's all there mentally you could disagree with him but he's sharp as attack so you cannot go joe biden you cannot go joe biden i don't ask this often I don't ask this often. I don't know if I ask this ever, but I'm going to ask you to spread around this segment, share it with whoever you can, and also many of the other segments that we're going to do today talking about Joe Biden, I want you to share those as well. Because people need to know, I genuinely believe that on Super Tuesday, at least, at least 20% of the people who voted for Joe Biden haven't really heard him speak over the last year or two, more than three minutes. I really believe that. 
because you know people people might not always make the right decisions but i think that if everybody knew the full picture about what's going on with joe biden's mental health there's no way he would win another election not possible so there you have it i think this is very important i think we have to get the word out because this is dangerous we're playing with fire and if joe biden gets the democratic nomination look out because there's a over overwhelmingly high chance that donald trump gets another four years